All right, there's a cruiser motorcycle that everyone's been talking about on the Yammy Noob channel. They say, you gotta try it, you gotta ride it, you've been dunking on it, you've been talking mad crap about it every other week, Yammy, we're sick of it. So they've been sending me DMs, emails, private messages, YouTube comments, and everything else under the sun. So we got one, well, here it is, we got it. We finally have a Vulcan S on the channel today. So be careful what you wish for, because we're gonna talk about it. Whoa, 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 whoa! Calm, calm down, Yam. It's, it's all good. We, we got, we got the bike from a Discord. Oh, Spite, it's not all good. They're making a mockery of motorcycle with this thing. <laughs> we, we, we've actually got a Discord. It's not even a V-twin. No, it's not. It's not. It's all right. How much power does this make? Makes about sixty-one horsepower. We're chunking it in the dump. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. It's a Discord bike. We can't do that. We actually got this motorcycle from a very friendly Discord member who agreed to lend it to us for the day, which I don't think he knew how mean we were going to be to it, right? <laughs> he didn't have the heart to tell him, yeah. Lost Pilgrim, I am sorry for the things that we're going to say, but uh, he did actually volunteer this motorcycle so that we could actually talk about the Vulcan from a place of knowledge mm -hmm. instead of just inferring because we've had the Z650 around. So we appreciate that. And today we're actually going to figure out why this is a good beginner cruiser or maybe perhaps not the best beginner cruiser versus something like this, which we have said time and time again is a bad beginner cruiser. Yeah. Really figure out what makes something a good beginner cruiser in this marketplace because you look at it and they're actually very similar yeah you know low seat height kind of the similar weight this one's a little bit lighter but not by a ton and you know it's they're both kind of in this, the same price point this one's a little cheaper this one's a little bit more premium but we would never say a beginner should get on this one. No, no, the full Zoot Scout over here is a pretty nasty motorcycle, uh, probably not the best option for a beginner. So it is great that Kawasaki and many of the other metric cruiser brands will sell you something that is much more beginner appropriate. And despite us always dunking on this thing and saying that it's milk toast, it's actually better than we usually think it is, but also a little bit worse than I think everyone else thinks it is. So let's get into today's video and talk about these two motorcycles. All right, guys, if you thought we were going to dive right in with a double vlog, you are wrong. I had to take this motorcycle out on my lonesome because, yeah, I have not exactly been the most staunch proponent of the Vulcan 650. And it has gotten so bad in the comments that I was literally compared to Hitler for talking on the Vulcan 650. So uh, I had to take it out and really see what it was all about give you guys my raw first impressions on this motorcycle and the first thing I can tell you is that it's probably about as good as the Z650 which is pretty good you know the Z650 was a good motorcycle and the uh, the engine is basically the same it does all of the same things it makes the same noise it you know, it's not exactly the most potent 650 out there, but it does fine. The main thing that has surprised me about this motorcycle, the main thing that has surprised me is how well it handles. This is a much better handling motorcycle than the Scout basically ever could be because of the skinnier front tire and the fact that this bike is essentially derived from a sport bike. Now, do not take that out of context. This bike is still not a super nimble cruiser. It's, it's still, it handles fine when you compare it to something like the Sportster or the Scout, but it's not, it's no sport bike. So it handles better, but it's not the best. I think it's really easy to ride is the way that I would put it. You don't really have to think about what you're doing. Sometimes you come into a corner on a cruiser and you're like, uh, am I gonna make it? Am I gonna make it? Am I overshoot? And you know, you have to think and jam on the brakes a little bit harder. And you don't really have to do that with this motorcycle. It's really easy to ride. Now, part of that is because the engine just is not very potent. It's, it's really kind of a, kind of a boring engine it's 
it's literally just like the Z650, except it's been down-tuned a little bit, so it makes a little less power up top and a little bit more torque down low, but it still revs out just as far, which makes it really kind of weird. Um, it feels like if you want to make a parallel twin, you got to make it rev out. You can't really make them torquey unless you do a cross plane. And so it's a very confused little bike because you get on a cruiser and you're like, okay, torque, got it. There's no torque here. It's, it's really not a torquey engine. You got to get it on the boil to feel the power. And it's, it takes a long time to get there because it's not a rev happy engine. So you really kind of have to work for all of the juice that this thing has, which is not much. You're, you're basically milking a grape is the best way I could describe it. So wrapping up my first impressions on this motorcycle, is it as abysmal as I say it is? No, not really. I mean, I was mostly being comical about it. The lists have got to be funny. Uh, but is it as good as everybody tells me it is? No. It's just not. It's, I would say it's very lukewarm. It, it is a functional motorcycle. It is a very functional cruiser. It's comfortable, which is what you want out of a cruiser. It goes down the road and it handles pretty well. But other than that, it's not very inspiring. It doesn't make me feel, it doesn't make me feel anything. It's, it's very just, it's like the Honda Civic of cruisers, in my opinion. Now, with that being said, it is a pretty good beginner bike, right? I mean, it's, it's a slower cruiser, it handles pretty well, and it's cheap. And a lot of people keep asking me if, I could, if they could start out on a Scout or a Scout 60. So why don't we bring Yam back in here and really put these two bikes head to head and see what the better beginner bike is. Spoiler alert, it's the Vulcan. All right, everyone, Spike just came back from his first ride, and it's crazy. He just told me he wants to sell all of his bikes and buy a Vulcan. Oh, yeah, dude. The Vulcan's the right bike for me, 100%. <laughs> it's so good. You're going to be converted, I'm telling you. Damn, dude. I'm going to sell my race bike. I'm going to sell the Scrambler, the dirt bike, the Vulcan. It just does everything. Why are we so, we're so mean to the Vulcan, dude. <laughs> so needlessly and aggressively mean. Alrighty, let's jump aboard. That's a real bike right there. That's a real bike. That's a good sound. It makes no apologies, huh? It has all the switch gear and everything else from uh, the, the Ninja 650 platform, huh? Yeah, it's literally exactly just a Ninja 650, but all kind yeah. of mashed and short. Yeah, the clutch pull is really nice and friendly. It looks like the bike kind of takes off super easily. Brake feel is... It, this is literally the same... Uh, master cylinder and brake lever setup as the Z650, so yep. I'm sure it'll feel just fine. You know, it has that mid-range punch just like the Z650 does, where it kind of surprises you for a 650. You're like, oh, it's got a pretty good amount of, you know, grunt mid-range. Not bad. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very fine, you know, in that same sense that the Z650 is very fine. It's, it's kind of the tip of the bell curve, I think. Do you know the weight on the Vulcan? I can't remember. It is in the mid 400s, mid to high 400s. Yeah, I, f I feel that it's a light, sprightly little bike, you know? Um, it's on better tires than the Scout, and it's on better tires than most cruisers come with anyways. So, you know, it feels like it can, it can kind of dance through the corners here a little bit better than your, your average cruiser. Yeah, I can already, you know, I can feel going back and forth from the Vulcan to this, just how much slower this bike's turning is. You know, it's it's a much more ponderous ride. Yeah, no, this is like a, like a proper little little sport cruiser thing. Um, and you know, despite it having a 650, it feels like it has pretty ample torque for a cruiser, right? It, it actually feels a little bit faster and sprightly, or actually a lot more sprightly than the 883. But it doesn't have the personality of an 883, that's for sure. I'm I'm interested that you say it has torque because I couldn't I couldn't really feel too much. It felt like it's you know a, a horsepower happy engine, but that doesn't really want to rev out because they changed the gear. No, I'd, I'd say this thing definitely has torque. I, I can feel it for sure. Um, 
you know, it's, it's nothing like a big displacement cruiser, but it, you know, given the lower weight and the little bit, you know, refined 650 that it has, yeah, it gives you that sensation. I will say, you know, the feeling of sitting on it is, it's like a simulacra of a cruiser, you know? This is, this is everything a cruiser is meant to feel like, you know? Back and forth from the Scout, the seats got the right feeling, my, my bars are nice and swept back, I got the forward controls. Like, my body is like, I'm on a cruiser. For sure I'm riding a cruiser motorcycle. But it's missing that pizzazz from the engine. For sure it is, you know? And I think that's one of the things that people come to cruiser motorcycles for, is a characterful engine, a good sound, and, you know, comfy ergonomics with good curb appeal. You, you gotta say though, every Metro Cruiser I've ridden, I mean, they're well-built things, no doubt about it. Um, everything feels really buttoned up here, but yeah, the materials are cheaper than the Scout, that's for sure, but I mean, yeah, it's not a bad motorcycle. Like, we can't say it's a bad bike. It's actually it's a pretty decent bike, but it's the same uh, factor that the Z650 gives me, you know? Yeah, it's that's exactly what I was thinking, is that it's, you know, it's very just milk toast yeah like yeah you could get a z650 you could get a vulcan you could get a versus but life's short you know <laughs> like life's kind of short so why do that when you can get something that's got a little bit more you know pep in its step right i will say the uh, the shifter's pretty sloppy on this thing i don't know if it just needs to be tightened up or adjusted but it does feel quite sloppy I tell you, I'm actually having a little bit of difficulty on this bike just trying to keep up with you on that. I can tell that that's just a much more agile motorcycle than the Scout is. I feel a lot less confident attempting to muscle this thing through a corner than I do on the Vulcan. No, this thing I could definitely, I mean, I'm riding at like super ginger three tenths kind of pace, but if I, if I really wanted to, I feel like I could hustle it a little bit more. Given, given that it's on a more traditional kind of 650 naked uh, tire setup, except for that 18 inch front end, um, you know, I feel like I can flick this thing in pretty good, honestly. So here's a question, right? Now, you get a cruiser to hang out with your, with your cruiser pals. You go out and you get a fancy looking black cruiser to line up out front of the bar and, you know, go bar hopping and go for a long haul. And so that tends to be your American style motorcycle. And people keep telling me that the Vulcan S handles really well, which I will give them. It does handle well. Yeah, compared to 1200 Sportster Indian Scout, this handles pretty damn good. It's like, it's like the Japanese makers can't make a bike that's that bad, you know? Yeah. But if that has none of the street cred that one of these American motorcycles has, but it handles well, and it's comfortable, why don't you just get a naked bike that handles well and is comfortable, you know? Why, why sacrifice, the, uh, why sacrifice the, the real cruiser life for, you know, kind of that simulacrum of cruisers? Well, I see this motorcycle for the guy or girl that maybe isn't that interested in joining the cruiser lifestyle of like Harley Bros and that kind of stuff, but rather they would just like to have a cruiser styled motorcycle for themselves to own and ride. They want something value packed. They want something that has, you know, they, they can go and pick up for five grand and it's just going to run and be reliable. And maybe they don't care as much about the spice of motorcycling. I think perhaps you and I have been tainted by the fact that we ride so many different bikes, right? Um, and, I, and I'm cognizant of that sometimes where I'm like, okay, I have to put myself in the mindset of someone who maybe does not have the opportunity like you did yesterday to ride eight different motorcycles in one day. <laughs> yep. And for me, like I ride probably like six or seven weekly different motorcycles. So you get to be a little jaded. You get to be a little discerning, I suppose. But you know, that, that's the kind of person I see getting this motorcycle. Um, it's, it's, it's very similar to what you said. It's better than I thought it would be, but also exactly what I thought it would be, you know? Yep. It's a very functional motorcycle. It's a very functional bike. It does exactly what you think it's gonna do, you know? 
I will say, I am actually surprised at the side-to-side -side flickability of this thing. Like, you can actually really get after it on the Vulcan. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. Yeah, and it's the guy I rented it from actually lives out on a really nice twisty road. And, you know, at first I was like, oh, you, you live out on this nice road and you got a cruiser. And after riding it around, I understand. Yeah, it's very confidence inspiring on the side of the tire. And uh, it's absorbing bumps and, and uh, the kind of undulations in the road pretty well, you know? I think that's down to its much lower weight over the Scout. The Scout much is lower, yeah. so heavy. This is, you know, this is a great option for beginners. I have to say it. It's a great I I would rather this bike than a Rebel 500 for sure for beginners. Oh, totally. You know? But I have to see how it pulls, I suppose. No, Vulcan! <laughs> Yeah, there's not a whole lot up top, but hey, it's a cruiser. It's about the torque. Yeah, but again, I didn't feel like a super great rush of torque like I would on, you know, a V-twin typical cruiser. Yeah. And so I, I really do think that that bike is deeply confused as to its identity. For sure it is. Yeah, it, it is definitely confused as to what exactly it wants to be. Um, but if I, if I remember correctly, Cowie makes a couple different Vulcan models, right? Yeah, so the 650 is their, you know, kind of sporty cruiser. And then they make a 900, which is a more typical cruiser. And then they even make the Voyager, which is, I believe is a 16 or 1700 cc V-twin touring bike. Yeah, I can see that. So there's a handful of flavors of Vulcan out there. And, you know, I, I see the... I understand why somebody would want to run out and grab a Vulcan. It's cheap, and it's, you know, it handles pretty well. And the thing about it that I'm really noticing is, you know, for beginners, it's a super approachable motorcycle. You know, the Scout can feel kind of hairy and burly and tough to ride in certain times, but this is a really easy to ride motorcycle, and that's what you're looking for for a beginner bike. It's ease of ride, you know? All right, so about $7,500 gets you a Vulcan brand new, but the Scout you can get for about nine grand. So why don't we take a closer look at both of these bikes and spot some differences. All right, Spite, so someone might look at these two motorcycles and think they're pretty similar if they don't know enough about bikes, but there's quite a few little differences. What's the first thing you're seeing? I mean, obviously the first thing I look at is these front tires. This front tire is so big and so chunky, yeah. and this one is actually a very narrow. It's almost normal sized if it wasn't an 18 inch rim. Yeah, so the standard sport bike tire size, standard motorcycle tire size is a 17 inch rim. This one actually is an 18 inch, but it's still a 120 70, so it's still a pretty standard size. This one is harkens back to the old white wall days, so it's a really wonky uh, 16 by 150 or something. I actually can't remember. Yeah, 130, 90, 16. It's a uh, chunky tire. A chunky tire, and it's harder to find good rubber in that size as well. I think the ergonomics are actually really similar in these two bikes. They yes. both have really low slung seat heights. They both have forward controls, which is really the cruiser thing to have. And they're both really approachable from a seat height perspective. I don't think anyone would have trouble flat footing either of these bikes. No, you, you'd have to be properly short to have an issue. And yeah. that's one of the things that draws people to these motorcycles. They seem so approachable. Yeah. And that's why even I thought about starting out on a Scout. It's true. Because, you know, I got on it and I was like, well, it's super low. I, I can keep my feet down. And it was before I knew anything about how motorcycling, how power related to the bike and all of that stuff. So I was like, yeah, it's, it's 100 horsepower. My car makes only like, what, 300? I think I can handle it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little different. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things that I notice really going back and forth between these bikes is the fit and finish. Yeah. This bike is gorgeous. It's it, beautiful. It may not be to our liking with all of the chrome and how kind of flashy and old school it is, but you can't deny that, you know, steel cables, we have all the cables hidden behind this plate. Where I'm looking at the Vulcan, 
and it definitely looks like a budget motorcycle. Yeah, I mean, Cowie went through the job of actually making a bespoke frame for this and everything else, but it's still just tubular versus this. It's like it's got the radiator molded into the frame. This engine right here is designed to be shown off and beautiful. Yeah. Whereas it seems like Cowie over here made this bike as green and flashy as possible to distract from the fact that it has this more agrarian engine in it. So yeah. this is the big difference between the metric cruisers like Honda's Rebel and the Vulcan over here. This thing's actually powered by a parallel twin, a 650cc, pulled straight from the Z650 and Ninja 650 platform motorcycle. So that's going to give it a very different feel when you're riding it, as you guys saw in our first impression ride. Whereas that thing has that four valve V twin 1133ccs, truly a perfect cruiser engine, in my opinion. You really can't mistake this sound for anything other than that glorious cruiser note. Yeah. And this thing, it the, the exhaust note is a bit of a disappointment. I gotta lie. The, 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 you gotta lie? <laughs> you gotta tell the truth. I gotta tell the truth. You can't, I can't lie to lie. them, Spike. I can't lie. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a little bit of a wimpy exhaust note. I, I would like hearken it to a lawnmower being run through a beer can. Yeah. It's, it's very utilitarian. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this just has that classy sound. It feels classy to ride. Yeah. And it just feels a little bit more substantive. It's true. Yeah. I think the other thing I'm noticing as well is, you know, front suspension on both these motorcycles. Cruisers are not known for their super high spec, high adjustability suspension. So both of them have a pretty simple, small, skinny little fork set up at the front. Not mm -hmm. a whole lot of travel. Rear suspension travel on both of these is pretty good. You're not looking at something like a bone stock 883 that has like, I don't know, an inch and a half of rear suspension travel. That was garbage. So both of them will be able to handle bumps and potholes and stuff like that. Um, but you know, Cowie's done a great job here making an approachable cruiser motorcycle that anyone could be proud to own and ride unless they have to actually get on the throttle and hear the bike, unfortunately. Um, but Spike, what do you say we get back to the shop? Let's wrap up our final thoughts on these machines and let's go from there. Let's do it. Alrighty everyone, we're back in the shop now wrapping up today's video and we've kind of come to an interesting consensus about the Vulcan 650S, the bike that we love to just put in the corner, whip and dunk on and just mercilessly beat out back. Spike, what do you make of it? Well, um, as a cruiser, I don't love it. Yeah. As a cruiser, I don't love it. As a beginner cruiser, I think it makes a really good case for itself. I'd agree. I think it's cheap, it's light, and it handles pretty well. The, the motor's predictable, even though it is really boring and bland, and yeah. the note is kind of atrocious. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to go out and learn how to ride on a bike and be comfortable while you do it, and you don't want a naked bike, this is a really good option. Yeah. It's definitely a much better beginner bike than something like the Scout is here. Totally, yeah. You, you really shouldn't get this as a beginner. No. Even even the Scout 60 is a little much with yeah. basically like 78 horsepower or something like that. Yeah. It's basically this, but without the sixth gear, Yeah. which is bananas. So, you know, while people are saying, you know, the Vulcan boys are probably celebrating popping champagne right now, I still don't love this motorcycle. I don't either, yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it works. It's very functional. Yeah. I think for me, the big takeaway for the Vulcan S is um, when you look at other metric cruiser options, excluding the Bolt, this actually makes a really good case for itself. It's cheap enough and it's full sized. When you look mm -hmm. at something like the Rebel 300s, even the Rebel 500s, they're a bit diminutive. They're quite yes. mini sized. However, the Vulcan feels about the same size as the Scout over here. It's got this big commanding tank, forward controls. It's a full sized motorcycle you can learn and get better on with. And I think it makes a great case for itself in that. And it's pretty cheap too. What, like 7,500 bucks for this thing? Yeah, and it doesn't have that, that aggressive nerd energy that the C50 has. Not really, yeah, no, it's, it's got a little bit of nerd it's, energy. It's very nerd. It, it is a it is a nerdy bike, <laughs> but the C50 is like it's got oh a pocket God. protector, Coke bottle glasses, it's, and a little bow tie. It's, it's just, telling you how great its MPGs are. You know, <laughs> yes. you're just like, come on, man, come on. It's a motorcycle. At least this one can have some fun if you want to. Yeah. Give me a one to ten on the Vulcan as a motorcycle, and then give me a one to ten as a beginner motorcycle. Okay. So as as a motorcycle, if you're looking at this and you're not a beginner, I would consider it the absolute tip of the bell curve. If you think about uh, what's his name from Idiocracy, that main character was the exact tip of the bell. Right. Not not too dumb, not too smart, not too funny, not too bland. This is exactly that motorcycle. Yeah. It is the perfect tip of the bell. Uh, 
it's it's there. Would you say it's the Ninja 400 of cruisers? Yeah, yeah, I really would. Kawasaki just doing a great job in the beginner market over here, I suppose. But yeah, I would agree. I think it's sort of like a, you know, as a beginner cruiser option, like you said, that kind of middle of the road kind of just, you know, no one's really going to be too offended by it or unoffended by it. Mm -hmm. It's just very much a middle of the road kind of bike. Yeah. yeah. But can you think of any other beginner cruisers that do what this thing does and maybe has more panache, more soul and character? I think the Yamaha Bolt yes. is a good option. I think so too. I think the 1200 Sportster is an interesting option, but it's a lot more expensive. That's yes. the problem. The 1200 Sportster costs what this, this thing costs. It costs more than that. The 1200 more Sportster than that. is like 11 grand. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's that's crazy. But you can get them used for a lot less. Yeah. That's why I think the Honda 1100 Rebel is going to really shake things up in this category because it's somewhere between a big 1200 Sportster and a Vulcan 650 with Honda reliability and dependability. That's why we're very excited to get that as our next modern classic bike. However, you did not give me your one out of 10 for this as a motorcycle. Oh, as a motorcycle, I do. Yeah, not as it. a beginner bike, A just a motorcycle. How do you feel about it? Uh, it's functional. It's it's very functional. I'd give this like, if, if you're not a- Do it, you want to say a five out of 10? Because it's middle of the road. Yeah, as a beginner, it's it's like a seven or eight. Yeah, as, it's a as, great beginner bike. As just a bike, it's five. It's a yeah, five. I, I have to agree. I was surprised by the way it flicks from side to side. Mm -hmm. I was surprised and pleasantly surprised by the weight. Um, but I, I would probably also rate it like a four and a half or five as a motorcycle for me as a guy who's ridden and reviewed lots of different motorcycles. Yes. It doesn't blow me away in any capacity. Um, versus something like the Duke 390, which is a beginner bike, but also a great motorcycle that's a ton of fun to ride. So yes. that's the difference. We talk about the Vulcan being kind of milk toast is that there's plenty of beginner bikes that are great for beginners, but also great for anybody else. Smart Pillin 401. Yeah, awesome awesome motorcycle. motorcycle, super fun. But this is pretty much what we thought it was gonna be, unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And we'll never admit we were wrong, <laughs> never. Not even once. Just Friggin' Vulcan boys, <laughs> calling spite Hitler, <laughs> right? <laughs> Unacceptable. I think I touched a nerve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you own a Vulcan, let us know down below in the comments why you love it so much. If you haven't espoused, your true beliefs about this oh, motorcycle. I'm sure they have. I'm sure you already have. There's no way you made it to the end of the video and now you're telling us. Who actually watches the video in the comments? Nobody, right? Come on, you're already, you're already typing up your thoughts right as soon as it happened. Um, but that's what we think about the Vulcan. But the point I'm gonna make is that if you own a Vulcan and you enjoy it and you ride it, more power to you. The guy that gave us this bike, the Discord member, he loves it, right? Yeah, he loves it. It's his. That's he all goes that matters. And rides it out on Lime Creek all the time. That's great. Just because I don't like your motorcycle doesn't mean it's bad. I just don't like it. <laughs> Bringing Royal Enfield Himalayan owners. <laughs> just getting everybody <laughs> in there. Everybody's on. Yeah, I don't know what's happening with this final take. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching today's video. We'll see you later. Keep watching Yammy Noob. 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 Keep watching Yammy Noob.